Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by, by Tri-County Logging. Experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving Southern and Mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. The first four-sided box call of its kind, Four Play Turkey Call. The patented design produces unique sounds that work well with call-shy birds. Four different sound rails with lid movement along each rail for multiple tones. Take your calls to the next level with a four-play turkey call. Hi everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Silik, and we've got a great show in store for you this week. One fun pastime here in Michigan is hunting for morel mushrooms. It's something the whole family can get involved in. It's a delicious but kind of short season depending on where you're at in the state. We're gonna show you a couple of different mushroom hunts from across the state and Jimmy and Jordan have a different kind of hunt in store for us this week. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have a really good turkey hunt to kick off this week's show. Now, we've had kind of a rough season when it comes to getting successful turkey hunts on camera, but Jordan Brown was able to get it done just a couple of weeks back. You won't want to miss that. So lots of good stories on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor. The autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Green Mark Equipment. Green Mark Equipment is a John Deere dealership network in southwest Michigan and northern Indiana. Green Mark provides sales and services to farmers, commercial businesses, large property owners, and homeowners. Information about pricing and products available can be found online at greenmarkequipment.com. By Angler Quest Pontoons. Angler Quest is a Michigan based company building boats designed for comfort and fishing functionality. For more information about the 2022 models, anglerquestpontoons.com. By Polar Craft Boats, offering riveted and welded boats for the outdoor enthusiast. Whether you're targeting fish or waterfowl, Polar Craft Boats have several models to choose from that keep you high and dry. For more information, polarcraft.com. The 2022 turkey season has been full of close encounters with camera in hand, but very few turkey tags have been notched along the way. And when I wasn't filming other hunters, I was spending time trying to fill my own tag where things weren't going a whole lot better. Well, it is April 29th, cold, clear morning. It's been a tough first week of turkey season, but got a bird going absolutely nuts here off the roost, so there he is again. Hoping to change our luck this morning. Not in the best setup for filming. Uh, kind of a big hardwood situation. I do have some decoys out, but uh, no field, no field close or anything. So uh, fingers crossed. Maybe this is the morning we can kind of break the camera jinx. I'm filming myself. Like I said, not a great setup. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. After hitting the ground, this Tom was headed right for me. I just needed him to clear a fallen tree so I could take the shot.
After a lengthy back and forth that lasted close to 15 minutes, this Tom finally had enough and turned back around. Although he was well within range, he never did clear the fallen tree and I decided not to take the shot. A few days later, I decided to come back to the same property and try again, this time during the middle of the day. up with a bird here. I just had one gobble a few hundred yards away, but it's really open where I'm at right now. So I'm going to sit down right here and see if, if they'll come my way. Uh, this is the same property I called that bird in a couple mornings ago that hung up on the roost. Gobbled like crazy, but never came all the way in. Sounded like two of them gobbling here, but uh, we'll get set up quick and, and see. This is not the best spot for them to be, but We'll see what happens. These two long beards worked their way right in, but once again held up at about 50 yards. As they turned around to leave, I found a small opening and tried to make the shot. Since the middle of the afternoon, it's 12:30. Just called in two times. Um, kind of my own fault a little bit. It's not a great setup. Uh, it's so open in here that when when they responded, I kind of had to sit right down. And the birds worked all the way in. And I know they could see the decoys, but they kind of hung up at like 45 or 50 yards. Is kind of what I was thinking. Maybe maybe a little closer. Um, but there's just a ton of stuff in my way and I finally uh, did get a shot as they, they turned around and it's kind of a now or never situation, leaned out and thought I had a pretty good hold on the, the closest bird and I just smoked this sapling in front of me. Um, I'm sure that didn't help my cause but looks like a swing and a miss. I'm going to go follow up to make sure but I saw both birds walk away so I don't think there's any damage done there, but we'll double check. Just the kind of year it's been. My next hunt was about a week later on a different piece of property where I'd roosted a large group of birds the night before.
different day, different property, but same problem. This bird held up at a little over 50 yards, but this time as he turned to leave, I didn't have any brush in my way. Finally. Oh man. <clears throat> what a great hunt this morning. Right off of the roost and an absolutely, I mean, I don't know if you can see behind me, just absolutely gorgeous this spot. Um, man, it has been a fun turkey season, but it has been a tough one. And I am so thankful that there is a big gobbler down. <laughs> I was really hoping he'd come closer. That was about a 55 yard shot. That's what I'm guessing. It definitely out there ways. But once he turned around, it wasn't coming to the decoys. It was definitely a now or never situation. So decided to uh, take the squeeze out there and look like it hit him absolutely perfect. So still got birds all over the field. Sun's coming up. Whew, doesn't get any better. A good roost hunt is almost impossible to beat. Well, congrats to Jordan on a really nice bird and really a good job in sticking with it. And I still have my tag in my pocket as well. So hopefully getting out before the end of the season. What we're gonna do right now is show you something else that is really popular at this time of year, and that is mushroom hunting. Here's a couple stories that we've brought you before, but these are really good at teaching you not only where to find them, but when to find morel mushrooms. Today I would be tagging along with Ron Brimmer on one of his annual trips north to look for mushrooms. And even though we were a little on the early side as far as time of year goes, it didn't take us long to find a few morels. We're uh, in the northern woods of Michigan doing some mushroom hunting. Obviously you can look around, there's popple trees, that's where I do the best. Um, I'm with Jordan from Michigan Out of Doors here. Um, we actually just found a couple right here. Today we're looking for black morels. Um, there's also another one, the white morels, which um, you don't find in popple trees. These are popple stands. This is where I find most of my blacks. Um, the white morels grow in ash trees or dying elm trees, um, and they're later in the season. You know, the blacks come up first, and uh, usually I judge. Um, you ever seen the red buds on the road from the maple trees? If you see the road covered in those, it's a good chance that the blacks are out. That's kind of my gauge. I don't know if anybody else has ever deducted it that way, but that's what I use. If you see uh, the red buds on the road, the blacks are usually out. And then uh, like Mother's Day and later is uh, the whites. You know, everybody says, oh, you must have a lot of private spots. 99% of my mushrooms come from public land. You know, we have a ton of Manistee National Forest in Michigan. Um, and you just got to put in your time and, and find them. If you got some on private property, that's great. But, you know, this is uh, it's for us here to use, and uh, that's where I find them. I just put in my time and drive around on a beautiful Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday, <laughs> if you can get off during the week. Um, it's, and it's a beautiful day today. The sun's shining. I think it's warm as it's been in a while. Although Ron loves to look for mushrooms, he's also an avid hunter and angler. You just might recognize him from Facebook, where he has a very popular page that many Michigan sportsmen follow, Ron Brimmer Outdoors. And if you don't know, I'm Ron Brimmer from Ron Brimmer Outdoors. I started out uh, taking food selfies and posting it on Michigan Buck Pole, um, and it kind of blew up from there, and I started my own page. Um, but I, I just have a passion for the outdoors. And, uh, and I like to share what I do. I like other people to share with me. Um, the, kind of my favorite things, coyote hunting and trout fishing, um, mushroom hunting rates right up there, turkey hunting, deer hunting. Um, I just love to be outside and, 
you know, and if you, you know, if you don't realize what we have here in Michigan, um, it's just all here for us to use. Mushroom hunting is a great way to get out with your family. Um, you know, if you're not necessarily into hunting, like my daughter, she loves the outdoors, but she's not much of a hunter. But this is how we bond. You know, it's kind of a gateway. Get your family out in the woods, spend some time. You know, you're sick of winter. It's uh, something to get you out in the wilderness. been here roughly an hour I'd say. I think we're doing okay. I'm sure we're missing some. Um, sun shining. It's a great morning to be in the Michigan out of doors. When you're out hunting, fishing, mushroom hunting, you find some debris, pick it up, take it out with you. And we all got to do our part. Honestly, I just drive around until I, I see a stand of popples. Like I said, you just you find a stand and put your time and walk around. Obviously, if you see other vehicles parked there, it's probably a good idea that they're mushroom hunting and you may find some there. Um, sometimes you'll find a random piece of garbage in the woods, a beer can or something, and that kind of an idea that maybe look in that area because a lot of times people litter when they shouldn't and uh, you know they'll find a mushroom and set their garbage on the ground. So I kind of use, sometimes you use that as a landmark. All in all, things were going pretty well, with our bag of mushrooms getting bigger and bigger as the morning went on. As we were wrapping up, I asked Ron what his favorite recipe was for mushrooms. My favorite way to cook them is I slice them in half from top to bottom, soak them in water, a little salt water overnight, uh, rinse them off, let them dry a little, uh, roll them in just regular white flour, and then I fry them in butter. Um, crispy on one side, then flip them over to the other side, and then uh, little bit of sea salt and uh, they're, they're pretty good. The next week or two should provide good conditions for finding morale mushrooms in most of the lower peninsula. So if you have some extra time, you just might want to give mushroom hunting a try. Special thanks to Ron Brimmer for letting me tag along on a beautiful morning in northern Michigan. It's a beautiful day out here in southern Michigan. We're out on some state land property hunting the elusive and flavorful black morel. Uh, these mushrooms are really hard to find, but once you figure them out, they're really not that hard. Uh, as you can see, we're in a stand of popple, and that's the key thing for finding these blacks. Um, they, they love pole size to softball size popple trees, and they grow right tight to the trees or in between. Uh, we also brought pretty much a whole kitchen set to make a nice little fire um, and make my favorite dish on these is a morel mushroom sauce. So we're gonna try to whip up that here um, if we can't find enough of them. Black morels are often spread out over a larger area, but there's often small areas within these spots where the mushrooms tend to congregate and you can usually find them there every year. So the white morels, of course, they grow under apple trees and uh, dead elm, where the blacks, they typically will grow in the exact same spots in the mix of all these popple, um, right down to the exact tree, uh, specific locations. And you'll get a big stand of popple, and you might actually have six to eight locations in the mix of that that are hot spots. Um, so I typically focus on those really hot spots and of course every year you venture out try to find new ground. As 
So we've just found a little cluster. Um, I haven't picked the spot yet this year, so we just came to a fresh location and sure enough, like, oh, actually there's a bigger one right there. I can see two, three, we just picked six uh, mushrooms here in this little spot. Um, so we're just gonna go through this whole area where I haven't looked yet this year and hopefully we can pick some more mushrooms. I can tell you right now, we walked by a lot, so you can't find them all. Um, there's always gonna be mushrooms out here. If you do see a lot of people, um, I, I wouldn't ever get discouraged. Typically, they don't know your spot, or if you you know do find a spot, um, they're not gonna find them all. So, I mean, I can, you could hunt in the mix of a crowd of people and you're still gonna find mushrooms if you are dedicated, you know, put the work in. Like right now there's there's a mushroom hunter over, you know, probably 100 yards away from us, but I can already tell he's moving really fast through the woods, so that's another thing, maybe slow down, uh, take your time, you know, pack a little snack and just spend some time out in the woods. I think it's key to use a, a sharp knife and to actually leave the bottom half of the mushroom in the ground. It allows a cleaner mushroom pick. Well, it's the second week of April, out here with a couple of good buddies tonight. Um, honestly, I was just going to do the trip kind of for fun and thought I'd throw the camera in last minute. But we've already found a bunch of mushrooms. Uh, not sure how many, at least 50, probably more, but we've been kind of dinking around, getting some shots, but uh, having a great time and are getting ready to start a great meal. My buddy Frankie's going to be uh, whipping up a kind of a meal out here in the woods, which is a little bit different. So to see how that goes, we got... I don't know, maybe two hours left of daylight, so we're gonna keep hunting for a little bit, um, but then we're gonna work on dinner, so should be fun. So far, so good. I typically don't ever rinse them. I don't like to add water to the mushroom. It really absorbs most of it, and that's why you wanna pick clean. Uh, just practice clean picking. Uh, you're always going to get a little bit of dirt in and mushrooms, but you can't get away from that. So, biggest thing is getting out any large bugs, slugs. If you have a dirty mushroom, don't put it in your bag of, of clean ones. Try to separate it because it'll kind of ruin a whole batch. So, first off, we're going to sear some garlic, shallots, and some herbs. Um, then reduce the mushrooms down. Then after they're cooked, uh, we're going to add the brandy, burn off the alcohol and the brandy, then add the heavy whipping cream. Uh, once, once you add the heavy whipping cream, you just let everything reduce, a slow simmer. Um, you can do it quicker, but it just needs to you know, reduce down and get a little thicker and we'll get that sauce consistency. So we're just going to keep the duck simple. We're going to olive oil, season it up, a little garlic powder, garlic salt, salt and pepper, and pretty much just sear that. We want to, you know, keep that medium rare. So here we have mallard that we actually, the three of us, harvested in late season over a jasmine bed of rice with the mushroom sauce. Now this mushroom sauce goes good with the rice and the duck. It really, you know, makes the whole meal. But uh, it was all cooked over the fire and I think we're uh, gonna have a good feast here. <laughs> Anytime you can have a meal over a fire, it's usually pretty good. But this one is going to be tough to beat. 
it was a great afternoon in the timber with a couple of good friends here in southern Michigan. Thanks so much for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stay tuned in upcoming weeks. The springtime fishing is getting into full swing and we will be all across the state bringing you some great fishing adventures. If you'd like to see where we are and where we're headed next, you can always check us out online. Well, that's right, Jenny. Online is a good way to kind of keep tabs on us. You could do that through our website, our different social media platforms, as well as YouTube. So lots of places you can be checking us out. And if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by. Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-2-ALTA. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck. Deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want to far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love this land, I am a Michigan man.